Hey y'all, Bill Quirk with the Defensive Training Group and Big Daddy Unlimited here to do another video for you. And today we're gonna to be talking about battle belts, war belts, whatever term you wanna use. And uh, talking about how to set them up, the different types that are out there and the purposes, the applications we might use them for. So the first one we've got here, this is actually my old duty belt that I used to wear uh, semi-concealed under a loose overshirt when I was on the task force. And um, this one is set up as a, it's a one and a half inch uh, Velcro line belt with a inner belt system. And so this actually went through my belt loops on my pants and then this attached on the outside. I've heard some people say that um, they don't think this works very well. I wore this for almost 10 years and it worked very, very well. The big concept here was I carried so much equipment as you can see, and I'll talk about this stuff in a second, that uh, I didn't want to have to thread it onto the belt every single day when I was getting ready for work. So this has made it a lot more convenient given the amount of equipment that I did carry on a daily basis. So what we have is, this is just a pouch, my badge one here, pouch for my cell phone, my Blackberry is what it was at the time, my holster, I have a spacer, just another tech lock here that keeps the tourniquet away from the butt of the gun. I didn't want it sliding up and preventing good uh, firing grip access of my pistol. I had a small individual first aid kit with quick clot, a chest seal, and a compression bandage on this side then. Nothing in the small of the back, we'll talk about that. Handcuffs, a flashlight pouch, single AR-15 mag pouch, and then two mag pouches for my pistol, my duty Glock. This is what I always carried with me. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I had at least what I needed. There were times when I was caught when I didn't have my plate carrier with me, I didn't have it on. Suspect shows up, we jump out of the car and I was still in a plain clothes capacity with no armor on, but I still had minimal kit available to me. Most notably, um, my handgun, some spare ammunition, and then my medical equipment. So that's the gear that I had there. This is more of a conventional wide padded war belt. And uh, this is actually a VTAC. Um, it's an older one. And the idea for this is this can go over an outer jacket, over um, just an ordinary belt setup, and it gives you more stability and more comfort because it is so wide. Now you'll notice that this one is set up uh, in a similar fashion as my other one. Tourniquet is, uh, in this case, I've started putting them on the front because that's where I wear them in my concealment setup. Holster, still have my trauma kit back here. And then two mag pouches for my pistol, single M4 mag pouch, and then a carrier for my flashlight. On this one, um, no handcuffs, because it's not what this was designed for. This isn't a duty rig. And uh, this is meant more for a training application. And then finally, we have my current setup. And so as I've evolved, I've gone from the thicker type war belt, and this is about, I don't know, three inches, four inches in, um, in width, to a two inch micro battle belt, and this is from Volon Gearworks. This just gives me, again, I said this when, in regards to this, only what I need and nothing else. So this one is a Velcro line belt, and I've got a padded liner that Velcros into the inner Velcro here that gives me the same idea as this. It gives me some cushion. This can go over a outer garment, uh, a jacket. I can adjust it if, I'm, if it's cold and I wanna put something over an outer jacket or a raincoat or a sweatshirt uh, right now. In Florida, it's getting to be a little bit cooler uh, day in and day out. So you might find yourself in a situation like that. And this allows you some flexibility to put it over those outer garments and still give you everything you need. So as with this one comparable setup, I've got my tourniquet. I've got my trauma kit on the back here, single mag pouch for my AR, and then two for my pistol, plus a more readily accessible single pouch for my pistol there as well. A couple of things uh, that are, are cross over to all three of these setups that I wanna talk about. You'll notice that I don't keep anything at the small of the back. Putting something at the small of the back is generally a bad idea. If you fall down, if you trip or whatever, and you've got something hard at the small of your back, it's a good way to injure your lower back. So I try to keep that area slick. Um, the trauma kits are positioned more towards the kidney position because I wanna be able to access them with either hand. The tourniquet as well needs to be positioned so that you can access it with either hand. These two setups were configured at a time when I carried the flashlight in a pouch as um, now that I'm retired and I, I will integrate this into my concealed carry setup. So I'll pull off my appendix holster and then put this over my, uh, my existing trouser belt. 
I already have my flashlight that I always carry in my rear pocket, so I just keep it there. And that way I have commonality from my concealed setup to my, my war belt tactical setup. Um, so I don't have an actual uh, flashlight carrier on this one at this point. With all of these setups, they've only got what I need. And so as we discussed in the body armor video again last month, avoid the temptation to put too much stuff on these. Well, I've got additional molly, I've got additional real estate, let me put more stuff on here. And I've seen people that will have multi-tools and more ammunition, more rifle mags, all kinds of different things that are just loading down the belt. If you need something, then by all means, put it on the belt. If you think it's something that you are gonna utilize routinely that you need with you at the time what you're doing whatever, and you can't go back to your range bag or back to the car or whatever, then by all means, put it on the belt. But try not to load yourself down so much. So uh, I always go with a single uh, AR mag. I don't put multiple AR mags on the belt. And uh, this was the one that I always had with me. So again, if I was caught without my body arm, without my plate carrier, I had at least one reload for my rifle with me. And that's where my hand knows to go. That's my, my primary emergency reload. If this is not here, then I would go up and start working off my chest. And I had additional magazines on the front of the plate carrier. But uh, that was a decision that I made to not overload my belt, not put more stuff. Even though I could have, uh, I chose not to. I tried to keep it simple, just what I needed and nothing else. So the last thing to talk about is why, what, are, what is the applicability of these types of setups to, to you? And there are a couple of different ways we might utilize these. So if you're a law enforcement officer, you know, you might have a setup that gives you a little bit more capability. You have a bit more equipment available to you. Um, if you're an avid trainer and you go to a lot of classes, this gives you the ability to walk onto the range with your concealed carry setup, take that off, put on your war belt, your battle belt, and go and do your training, take that off, put your concealed carry gear back on, and uh, go to lunch, go home, whatever the case may be. So it's just, it's a convenience type of thing, and you do get to carry a lot of equipment, a bit more comfortable, a bit more stable in certain circumstances, um, if it's set up con and configured properly. And then finally, as a home defense setup, and we talked about this with the plate carriers because you can do kind of the same idea. If armor isn't something that you're interested in, a war belt might be a, another option to consider. What this gives you, if you consider that your average homeowner, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you hear that, that, that bump outside and you want to go and investigate and see what it is, if you grab your home defense gun, that's probably all that you've got. With something like this, uh, you can get up, slap this on, and you've now got your firearm, spare ammunition, medical equipment, a flashlight, and if you configure it with a cell phone pouch, your cell phone. So you've got everything that you may need that can go on very quickly, regardless of what you're wearing, and you can go out and you're just better prepared for whatever the situation might call for, as opposed to walking out with just a weapon with only the ammunition that you've got on board. So just some things to think about, training and home defense, and then again, duty, uh, if that's something that's relevant to your particular situation. So uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, please put them below, give us a like, and uh, there's anything we can do for you, please let us know. Stay safe.